How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. With the 2019-2020 NBA season just a couple weeks away, many teams truly believe they have what it takes to contend for a championship. The LA Clippers are the preseason favorites, but four other teams in the West will have a lot to say about that. While a couple other teams are really just one or two pieces away from truly contending, and a couple good players will be traded in the middle of the 2020 season. With that said, here are my predictions on some of the players who will be traded in the middle of next season. Before we start this video, shout out to my man Brandon Tuhick from Brooklyn, New York for rocking the absolute travesty t-shirt. Brandon despises the Golden State Warriors, but very happy to see the NBA be more competitive this coming season. Now on to this video. Andre Iguodala of the Memphis Grizzlies, who has no desire whatsoever to suit up for the team. A veteran on his last years on a rebuilding team after making 5 straight finals makes no sense. Golden State had to get rid of him to free up money for D'Angelo Russell. After not attending training camp, he bat wants a buyout where Memphis refused. Teams like the Rockets, Jazz, Lakers, Clippers, and Nuggets are likely begging to fight for the 6-7 small forward. Likely remaining on the Grizzlies roster well into the season, the team agreed he can continue private workouts at a location of his choosing. Memphis is smartly not giving up Iggy for nothing. Trevor Ariza of the Sacramento Kings, one of the most confusing signings, two years worth $25 million, the 34 year old has slowly regressed over the years, just like how he signed with the Suns in summer 2018 made no sense, ended up with the Wizards, having 15 years of experience, a very good knockdown shooter, played over 1100 NBA games, will back up Buddy Hill getting limited minutes alongside Harrison Barnes and Bogey Badanovic, there's not much room for his head coach and former teammate Luke Walton to put Ariza in the rotation he won't be getting much playing time. Bradley Beal, despite Washington saying they won't trade him, the Wizards have nothing to look forward to next season. Being in a horrible position, Beal's locked up for two more years in the franchise going nowhere. His patience will be growing slimmer with the amount of losses his team will have the first two months. Using their mid-level exception on Ishmith is not the answer. Isaiah Thomas being out the start of the season won't help either. Many don't believe the franchise can do what it takes to get Beal help, so the only way would be to trade him, and if he produces high numbers, Washington can get a lot in return. Although he's not as good as a Paul George or Anthony Davis caliber player, the returns the Pacers and Pelicans got for those guys were massive. Minnesota, Chicago, Miami, and Denver are some teams that might have interest in the 6'5 shooting guard. Chris Dunn. Even during Bulls media day, Dunn wasn't included in the big four picture with Larry Marketing, Zach Levine, Kobe White, and Wendell Carter. With the team drafting point guard White, it seems like they're already looking to shop Dunn. Even last season, the Bulls criticized him for his lack of work ethic in the offseason, which angered the point guard, only played 46 games last season and had multiple injuries. After a strong improvement his sophomore season, hasn't gotten better at all in 2019. The franchise even acquired Thomas Sadoransky in a sign and trade with Washington, nothing but an average backup point guard, and resigned Ryan Archie Diakono on a three-year deal. All their accusations gives us hints on the writing on the wall for Dunn. After putting up just 11.3 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds in 30 minutes last season, Season, his true shooting mark of 48.4 is a red flag in today's NBA, a reason why the trade market's been cold for him. The 25 year old also struggles to share the floor with Zach Levine. Serge Ibaka, the Raptors are on their way to rebuild sooner or later, and having a productive veteran player on an expiring deal where contenders would be more than interested in trading for, Toronto also has Lowry and Gasol on expiring deals, but because of Serge's age, supposedly the younger one of the three just turned 30 years old, who knows for sure if that's really true. I believe he's the more likely of the three to be traded, despite the team saying they will refuse to trade any of their veteran guys, why wouldn't they want to get young pieces in return for the aging power forward. His numbers last season of 15 and 8 was still very solid. Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. After only playing just 9 games last season, with a lot of money left in his contract, K-Love got approved to still be a productive star caliber player if any teams wants to take a chance on him. At 31 years old, slowed down by injuries each of the last 3 seasons, the Cavs future plan doesn't include him. Now with second year point guard Colin Sexton and rookie guard Darius Garland in the mix, if he puts up 20 and 10 caliber numbers, desperate teams like Portland and Miami are some destinations that can land the 6'10 power forward. Steven Adams, with many reports OKC wants to get rid of him, being in constant trade rumors, the 7 foot big men's contract with 2 years 53 million is unaffordable for contending teams, despite being one of the best role players in the league. His averages of 14 points, 9.5 rebounds are very solid for a 3rd and 4th option on a playoff caliber team. According to reports, the Kings have been considered the favorites to pursue the big men, while the Mavs 
and Celtics also share interest, but trade talks have gone nowhere, with him and Andre Robertson the last remaining players from the franchise from the 2015-16 season. The team's focus on rebuild mode, being an old school center, and not being able to stretch the floor, OKC will have to lower their expectations on what they're going to get in return for him. Dennis Schroeder, also from the Oklahoma City Thunder, has two years, $15.5 million left on his contract, a great contributor off the bench last season, and now the team has 21-year-old Shai Gildress Alexander, who will be heavily dependent on as well as the rebuilding pieces, with the team trading away two of their best players. The 26-year-old will be better off contributing on a playoff caliber team or a team fighting for playoff position like the Timberwolves and Magic. Danilo Gallinari, one of the biggest assets OKC had in return for the PG trade, Gallo put up a career best 19.8 points over 6 rebounds on over 46% shooting last season. At 31 years old, capable of playing the 3 and 4 position, at 6'10 with great size, he was pretty healthy last season, played 68 games the most since the 2012-13 season, and looked like an all-star at times. Not needing to prove himself, his game is still very effective, but his health raises the biggest concern. For a guy who's missed at least 20 games in more than half his years in the NBA, he'll likely be in the lineup for OKC in the first half of the season, and if he can stay healthy, average between 17 to 21 a game, his stock will heat up in the trade market, the best possible outcome for the Thunder. Last but not least, also from the Oklahoma City Thunder, Chris Paul. The 34-year-old's name has been in trade talks ever since he was traded away from Houston in the Russell Westbrook deal, saying he's happy to return to Oklahoma City after starting his career there where they relocated after Hurricane Katrina. The 9-time All-Star has regressed it and very injury prone, put up a career low of 15.6 points last season. His leadership experience will be a huge stepping stone for the young guys, assuming he'll be on the roster for only a couple months. The Miami Heat's considered the front runner in landing CP3, a team who snatched Jimmy Butler from Philly and not good enough to truly contend. The only thing holding many teams back is the absurd, astronomical 3 years, over 124 million remaining on that fat contract. The potential for a buyout would be very unlikely since he's still a good player. When healthy, OKC would be absolutely foolish to just waive him. Preston Ellis of Bleacher Report went as far as saying Paul would not play a minute for the Thunder. With the season just weeks away, he believes the trade will be for Kelly Olynyk and Goran Dragic for Paul and Denver's top 10 protected 2020 first round pick. But Sam Presti won't be fooled by Pat Riley. The trade would allow OKC to open a lot of their cap space and get out of the luxury tax and use Dragic's expiring contract as a trade, but the negotiations can take a while. A duel with Paul and Butler will allow Miami to compete in the East, a better position for him than having no chance to win with the Thunder. If he decides to stick with OKC the whole season, who knows how much his game will decline this time next year. Honorable mentions include Kyle Lowry, Marc Gasol, Frank Nilakina, D'Angelo Russell, Hassan Whiteside, and Tristan Thompson. What other players do you guys think will be traded in the middle of the 2020 season that I haven't mentioned? Thank you so much for watching this video. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.